Hello! Welcome everyone! This will be a video on demand. I received this question a few times and today I will show you my African Violet setups and talk about the kinds of lights I use to grow my collection. A little disclaimer here. I'm a small hobby grower and not a scientist, so this video is based on my own experience growing African violets in the past two years. In the description box, I will also include a link to an expert video presentation published by the African Violet Society of America this year that I found particularly helpful. Let's start with natural light. African violets grow well in natural light. I have both east and west facing windows in my home and they do well in both natural light setups. This is a west facing window and there are some trees and building structures outside limiting access of direct sunlight. And the sheer curtain that I use helps diffuse the light as well. So mostly the plants receive the indirect sunlight with the brightest light on the west facing window coming in the afternoon and in the east facing window in the morning time. You've seen some of the violets that I grow in the natural light in the individual reviews videos. Most of my collection grows under LED lights supplemented with some natural light. When I started growing my new collection last year, I joined a local club, Thousand Oaks African Violet Society. It was a very special experience for me, and on that day I brought home my first named varieties. The club's generosity didn't stop at that, and a few days later, I also inherited my first plant stand that used to belong to a very special person, a president of the Thousand Oaks African Violet Society and also head of the African Violet Society of America Internet Committee, late Barbara Bird. It is her stand that you see in front of you. And this is where I film my monthly blooms videos. I truly think it has preserved some magic powers from its previous owner. Everything that I put on this stand flourishes and grows well. I will be forever grateful to Thousand Oaks African Violet Society and Barbara Bird's family for providing me with my very first African Violet stand. The stand has three shelves and three light fixtures. So each of the shelves has its own light fixture and it also has wheels on the bottom for easy cleanup. It measures about 70 inches tall, 51 inches wide and 20 inches deep. Each light fixture has two T8 bulbs and each of the bulbs is four feet long. To save on electricity, I replaced the fluorescent bulbs that came in the light fixtures with the LED bulbs. I customized each fixture with two different color temperature bulbs. One is 3000 K as a warm white light and one is 6500K, it's a cool white light. I got the light bulbs at Lowe's and I will include a link to all products in the description box under this video. I didn't know how to convert the old ballast in the fluorescent fixtures to fit the LED bulbs 
So when buying these, I made sure that they said on the box that they are compatible with the fluorescent fi fixtures. So this one says works with existing T8 electronic ballasts. And they also have the word replacement usually on the box. So this one is for 6500K, which is a very cool bluish white light. And this box is for the 3000K. And it also says works with existing electronic T8 ballasts. And this one is warm white light. The letter K in the light bulb parameters stands for Kelvins and indicates the color temperature of the light. On the Kelvin scale, the higher the value in Kelvins a light bulb has, the cooler the light looks. And you see both of these bulbs have 1800 lumens. Lumens measure how much light you're getting from a bulb. More lumens means it's a brighter light and fewer lumens means it's a dimmer light. And finally, T8 stands for the light bulb's diameter. T8 bulbs have a diameter of one inch. T12 bulbs have a diameter of one and a half inch and T5 bulbs have a diameter of 5 eighths of an inch. The closer the plants stand to the window, the more natural light they get. So I installed the lower capacity or the warmer color temperature bulb, the 3000K, immediately next to the window and the cool white color temperature 6500K further away from the window. You can see how light shows differently in these two bulbs. The warm white light shows as yellow and the cool white light shows as blue. The four inch distance between the light bulbs helps distribute the light from both bulbs more evenly across the shelf. And you can see that the plants quite enjoy it in here. Mostly I grow miniatures on this plant stand and the distance between the light bulbs and the top of the plants is about eight inches. Out of all setups, this one has been working the best for my plants. I think it's because it allows to customize the light setup by including two different light bulbs with two different light temperatures, which allows to provide a broader light spectrum for the violets. And having some access to natural light helps the plants thrive on the stand as well. And here next to the east facing window are my remaining plant stands. There are three of them and they're all of the same kind. The stand is called Trinity four tier shelving rack and it has liners and wheels. I will include a link to it in the description box. The dimensions are 72 inches tall, 48 inches wide, and 18 inches depth. For these plant stands, I use shop lights with fixed LED bulbs in each light fixture. All of them have the same color temperature, 5000 K. And they have two different light intensities or brightness parameters. Here further from the window is 
the 4800 lumen so it's a brighter light and I also have a slightly less bright fixtures of 4100 lumen and uh, I have more of these here so because they cannot be customized they produce the same color temperature from the two light bulbs 5000 K or 5000 Kelvin because they cannot be customized the plants do not receive the full spectrum they normally receive from the natural light Another disadvantage of these lights is a very small distance between the two bulbs. They're only two inches apart. And so as a result, they create the brightest spot in the center or in the middle of the shelf, creating too much light for those plants that are located in the very middle, immediately under the light bulbs. The leaves and the starter plants that are growing in the propagation containers do rather well under these lights. I've been noticing, however, that some of the adult plants growing here in open air develop tight centers from the excessive light exposure. So here, these plants are doing okay, and this is Cajun's Fair Maiden. Here is Moss Purple Poodle, and I see that the center is getting a little bit too tight, so I might be removing it away from the light to let the center of the crown relax a little bit. Jolly Fireball is doing well here, and Buckeye Nostalgia. So far, so good. But here I wanted to show you what happened to L.E. Berilove Ine or L.E. Beryllium Frost. You can see how the central leaves in the crown got all bunched up because they're trying to protect the very center here from the excessive light exposure. To avoid the tight crowns, I have been experimenting with varying the distance between the lights and the top of the plants. And I use zip ties here uh, to lift up the light fixtures as high up as possible. So the distance here is 13 inches between the light bulbs and the top of the plants. And finally, I decided to try a new type of light. It's called LED Full Spectrum Grow Light, and the brand is called Barina. I will include a link for these as well, and I will be installing them early next year. So there will be a new video coming up for these in the year 2021. Stay tuned.